play in the NBA. LeBron James ready to go. Kawhi Leonard ready to go. And right away, they're head-to-head, -head, Richard. This is what we are going to watch all year long. We're going to see it again in the postseason. These guys going head-to-head, -head, and I love it because neither of them shy away from it. Lakers were really good in the first quarter. Kawhi was ridiculously good in the second. Team defense. Anthony Davis has to be over there. Danny Green's going to be in a full denial. you got to know that that weak side help is going to be there. Kawhi shot 7 of 8 in the second quarter alone. Then... The Lakers on the fast break. LeBron throwing it down. Yeah, business decision. Look at that. <laughs> Look, that man is 47 years old still running and jumping like that. Good for you, big fella. Lou Williams doesn't want any part of it, but in the end, it was too much of that guy. Kawhi Leonard getting it done. He would score 30. The Clippers would get 60 off their bench. LeBron would score 18. Steve Ballmer loves it as his Clippers win 112-102. And so... The debut of LeBron and Anthony Davis was going well until the fourth quarter. The duo had 41 combined points in the first three, but ended up with a grand total of just two in the final quarter. We'll talk about it as we continue. Meanwhile, it wasn't the only game of the night last night. The defending champion Raptors got their rings and raised their banner, and they were taking on the Pelicans, who, of course, are playing without Zion Williamson for the first six to eight weeks of the season. Second quarter, Pelicans, they do have Lonzo Ball, and he's got a nice dish. They do. Lonzo Ball makes people around him better, and he's doing this without their best player in Zion Williamson. So I think Zion, I think uh, Lonzo is going to have a solid year. Yeah, the Pelicans, if Zion gets healthy, are going to be really good. Meanwhile, fourth quarter in a good game. Pascal Siakam just got the big deal, and boy, did he put up big numbers. 34 points, 18 rebounds, but he would foul out, and the game would go to overtime. And in the overtime, it was their postseason here. Fred Van Vliet. Fred Van Vliet. This was what everybody was excited about last year, and he started showing it again in the postseason. Just timely shots, timely plays, and a clutch, clutch player. He knocked down 34. He knocked down five threes, and the Raptors get the win, 130 to 122. So for at least one night, we can say no Kawhi, no problem, because Siakam was enormous. He becomes just the second player in Raptors history with 30 points, 15 boards, and five assists in a game. Vince Carter, the only other one to do it. But as we mentioned, the Pelicans play this game without Zion Williamson, who became the topic of a lot of conversation yesterday when the general manager of the Pelicans, David Griffin, took umbrage to some things he thinks he's hearing. Here's what he said. The notion that this happened somehow because Zion's in poor condition is just asinine. He wasn't in poor condition when he went 12 of 13 against Utah, right? It's not, that's not what it is. He's just a very unique body type. So look, David Griffin may be hearing that, and that's fine. I have no problem with him responding, but he's certainly not hearing it here. The questions about Zion are legitimate. Not that he's not in shape, but that he is a physical specimen, the likes of which we have never seen. And I completely agree with Griff. He's in great shape. But is, is he in the type of shape to handle an NBA season? And that doesn't, when we say shape, that doesn't mean conditioning. That can mean, like, should he try and lose 10, 15 pounds to lighten the load? Because you see, as players get older, what do they do? They try and shrink their bodies. They want to get big when they're younger, and then they want to shrink their bodies when they get a little bit older to take a little bit of pressure off their knees and joints. And for a guy that size playing this amount of minutes with that type of explosiveness, you might want to change your body type a little bit sooner than later. Well, can he change it that much? I want to repeat this because you can't just assume people are following this every day. The only two NBA players heavier than him are Boban, who was 7'4", and Taco Fall, who was 7'5". And neither of those guys are expected to play 42 minutes a night every single and night like And they don't like jump him. at all. And they don't jump like him. But my thing with him is that you can lose 10 to 15 pounds. It's going to be diet. It's going to be exercise. There's going to be things that you're going to have to change. He's 19 years old. He has 8% body fat, and he weighs 270 pounds. Good Listen, for him. No one is rooting for that kid more than we are rooting for the kid. He oh, has yeah. a chance to be so special, but this is, I think, the concern that you had even before the draft. Meanwhile, our coverage of the NBA on ESPN will begin tonight. We'll talk about that after we talk about this. Dak Prescott and the Cowboys trounced the Eagles Sunday night, taking control of the NFC East. You know that Dominique Foxworth is the president of Dak's fan club. Here's a look at Neek defending Dak last week. If I could choose one of these quarterbacks, I would choose Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott is on a better team. But Carson Wentz is the better quarterback. Dak Prescott is on a better team. Carson Wentz, his team won the Super Bowl without him. Why Watch a me? football game, so, and you see Carson Wentz play quarterback, and you see Dak Prescott play quarterback. Your eyes tell you that Carson Wentz is better at playing quarterback than Dak Prescott is. 
This was pretty heated last week, and Dominique is feeling good today. What do we have to say? I mean, I'm not a prisoner of the moment, so I was high on Dak when he had bad games, and I'm a little bit higher on him now. My issue is people act like there is some huge gap. Like, I think Carson Wentz is great, but there is not a huge gap statistically between these guys. And if you want to go to actual playoff production, this guy's the only one with a playoff win. Dak Prescott, that is. And you, go, and you can go back to Wentz and say that 2017 – season, MVP level season, what we're all pointing to, but you have to be honest about the team around him. We all argue about Dak and denigrate him because we say he has so much help around him. That 2017 team for, for Wentz, they won a Super Bowl without him. Yep. They had a great offensive line. They had great players. So all I'm saying is you can have Dak or Wentz, but let's not act like the gap is so huge and maybe Dak don't deserve to get paid as RC. much as Wentz or anything like that. Dak is a real baller. Hey, guys, I know there's a lot being expected of me here. Um, all right. So I'm going to do something that's unprecedented for whoa, me whoa. Uh, for, for get up. Curveball's coming. This what is it? It ain't going to be what it's Uh-oh. You were right. What? Oh, what? Got that for a moment. I got a dub. I like you that. You know, listen. Oh, that back. Listen, on them greenies. Listen, I, I watched the game and don't do that. And, no. and I was waiting, and I, I needed Carson Wentz to show me something. The last two weeks weren't good. The the Jets game wasn't a good game, and then you watch him the next week, and you say, and you start just, to give him excuses. Right. He had an opportunity. You're in Dallas. You're asking your team to play a game that's pivotal in the NFC East, and you don't show up. Sometimes things fall right, apart I, around you. Oh. I, I look at Carson Wentz. I said, okay, I look you at the MVP apart, season right? or the probable NF, MVP right season, now. and I want to see him come out of that and say, you know what? I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to show you some of that Nick Foles stuff along ooh, with ooh, this ooh, talent ooh, ooh. that makes me and that makes this team better, and I didn't see it. And so for as much as I want to – this is not about Dak as much to me as what I'm seeing from Carson Wentz recently and what I saw when you needed him the most – he didn't get to play in that Super Bowl, right? He wore a sweatshirt. He had an opportunity here to put Wait. his team on top. Okay. He didn't do it. I have to just throw something into this conversation, though. And I, I, You said earlier on this show that the Eagles needed to make a move at corner because the average quarterback puts up better numbers than Patrick Mahomes against them. Yeah. That's the defense Dak Prescott just did this to right. on Sunday night. Doesn't that factor into this somewhere? No, it absolutely factors into it. I'm just – my argument is not necessarily – and I think Dak is great. He's a franchise quarterback. I just want us to measure them on the same scale. We, no, asked, uh, we asked Dak to carry his team, but when Wentz doesn't carry his team, no, that, that's the, same, the same criticism doesn't come to Wentz as it should for Dak. And we say Dak is saved by this offensive line and all this great talent around him. The same criticism isn't, doesn't come when we talk about Wentz in his MVP season. So the, so the big thing for me wasn't necessarily what Dak did. It was what Carson Wentz didn't do. It's the way that this offense has looked listless. The also, too, you watch this team play. You watch this team be uplifted when Nick Foles is the quarterback, whether the running game's better, Doug right. Peterson coaches yeah. better, the defense oh, yeah. plays Frank better. Is gone. He's obviously they need him too. He's obviously not playing. This defense is obviously not playing well, but for the things that we see in Carson Wentz, the reason he was drafted number two, he is not doing those things to lift this team up, both from say, a physical standpoint and emotion. And remember, uh, this is the same defense. Can I get one more thing What's in? That, what's hey, you going to do a solidity? I'm sorry, no. Can we get Dallas, a second? You talked for two minutes when we started. <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys are the team that actually made us believe that Sam Donald was good, and you said he was better than Dak Prescott. Right. Was I was not, not was better than Sammy Fuller. Davis so Jr. My <laughs> thing is, Final during, thought. during the three games that they lost, Dak Prescott and that offense was moving the ball. They were amongst the best in the league. The difference was the defense stood up, and that gives Dak Prescott a short field. Meanwhile, Jerry Jones said something interesting this morning that we're going to get for you coming up next here uh, because I think it's very significant. It's not about the quarterback. It's about the coach. But speaking of quarterbacks, we'll also get to this. Aaron Rodgers, historic performance.